In Creo Parametric, the Behavioral Modeling Extension, or BMX, is the ultimate in feature-based parametric modeling. Let's take a look at a design example. Here we have a shampoo bottle. The way that it was created is that there is some construction geometry, a bunch of curves, then we have some surfaces, and then a protrusion that represents the volume of liquid that is held by the bottle. Then there is a shell feature that uses a negative thickness in order to create the thickness of the bottle on the outside of the liquid volume. Let's use insert mode in order to go back before the shell feature where we just see the volume of the liquid. Our design requirements are that this bottle is supposed to hold one liter of material. Let's go to the analysis tab in order to compute the actual amount. Then we will click on Mass Properties. Here in the Mass Properties dialog box, we can change from Quick to Feature to make this as a datum analysis feature. I'm going to change the name from the default to something that makes more sense like Volume. Now when I click the Preview button, I can see that the volume is equal to 1.18 times 10 to the 6 cubic millimeters. That turns out to be 1.18 liters. It currently holds 18% more volume than it is supposed to. Let's now go to the Feature tab. The feature is creating three different parameters, one for the volume, one for the surface area, and one for the mass. But all I am interested in is the volume, so I can uncheck the other two parameters. Then I will click the OK button, and we have a feature in the model tree that shows the volume. If you want to, you can add a column to the model tree. Let's go to Tree Columns. And then from the drop down list, I can change this to feature parameters. And if we enter the name of that feature parameter and then add it as a column, there we can see the amount of the volume. That's one way to see it. I want to do the math in order to convert this into liters. Let's go to our relations dialog box. You can get to that from the tools tab. Here we have relations. Also from the model tab, you can get to it from the model intent overflow menu. It is a command that I use so often, I have it in my quick access toolbar. Here we have inside of here, we can see the local parameters. Let's create a relation. I'm going to start off with a forward slash and an asterisk. And I'm going to type in a note to myself, convert volume to liters. And then I will put the name of the parameter in the feature, which I called volume, and then a colon, and then FID underscore. This means the feature with the ID number or the ID name. For simplicity, I also called the feature volume, so it would be easy to remember. Let me actually put in the name of the parameter that I'm going to assign this to. Liquid is going to be equal to. Let me hit the delete key. So it's going to be this volume, and I need to divide by 1 million. Divided by 1, and then 6 zeros. I will verify the relations. Now I have my parameter created called liquid, and we see the value here is 1.18. That is great. Let's click OK out of there. In order to see the value of that computation, I can also create a 3D annotation. Let's go to the Annotate tab. Here I am flat to screen. Let's create a note right here. And I will put volume, colon, sort of like some text to explain what this is, and then ampersand, and the name of that parameter I created. It's called liquid. So that's good. Oh, let's edit it some more. I want to put a little L afterwards, so I know that this is liters, and then click the OK button. There we go. We can see what the volume is, and I can even select it and change it. Yeah, let's make this easier to see. Nice big text there. So we see that the volume is currently 1.183 liters. Right now, that is sort of half of BMX. We have a datum analysis feature that computes the volume that we want. The next step is to create a feasibility or optimization feature 
that will change our model geometry to ensure that we are going to meet our goal. Let's go back to the analysis tab. Then on the right hand side of the ribbon, we have the feasibility optimization command. Here we have the ability to do an optimization study or a feasibility study. An optimization study includes a goal, some quantity to be maximized or minimized, but I only want to find the first available design solution, so I will change the radio button from optimization to feasibility. You'll notice that goal now is grayed out. Let's put in our design constraint. I will click on the add button. Here we have the design constraint dialog box. There's only one parameter available in here because there's only one parameter generated by the single datum analysis feature. And we want this volume to be 1 million cubic millimeters. Let's change the volume here. Again, type in a value of 1 million, which is going to be 1 followed by 6 zeros. Now I will click the OK button. The design constraint dialog box remains open. We can just cancel out of there. That's our single design constraint. Next, we are going to specify our design variables, the different dimensions or parameters in the model that we are going to allow to change in order to meet this design constraint. I will click on add dimension, and I'm gonna select the bottom curve out of the model tree. There are two different dimensions for the major and minor axis of the bottle so we can see that there are the dimensions d0 and d1 i'm going to add that to this note in a moment because i want to see how those change as we change other factors in the model so by default it's going to use plus and minus 10 percent of the original value here we can see the d0 dimension goes between 55 plus or minus 5.5 uh, let's say I want to open that up. Maybe I want to say that this can be as low as 45, and maybe I'm going to open this up so this can go as high as 65. Now, for the other dimension, which is currently a value of 40, again, it goes from plus or minus 10%. Let me say that, you know, uh, let's say that this can go from a minimum value of 30 up to a maximum value of 40. We don't want to get any wider than that. And now I can click the compute button and we can see again, just take a note, this is 40, this is 55. When I hit compute, it changed the 40 dimension to 37.172 and it changed this X dimension here to 46.865. Now that I have performed this feasibility study, we can create it as a feature in the model. By clicking on the check mark here, we'll get a little information window. We can type in the name of the feature, and I'm gonna call this one liter, so I know exactly what it does. There it is in the model tree. Now I can close out of here. You can see the 3D note has been updated to report the current volume. Oh yeah, by the way, it is 1.003 liters. You can control the precision or accuracy of the calculation. Let me select the datum analysis feature and edit definition, then click the next button. Inside of here, if you go to the options and then preferences, you could graph the results as it computes. Here from the Run tab, we have the convergence, which is one half of 1%. If you want it to be even tighter, you could change that value. For example, you could change it to 0.25% and then click the OK button and then close out of here and then hit the check mark. And now you see it's even closer. It's out to three decimal places. I have zeros inside of there. All right, back to the annotate tab. I'm gonna change this annotation to include just those other two dimensions so I can see how they update. Let me put ampersand D0, that was the first dimension, and ampersand D1, click the OK button. So there we can see the values of the major and minor axis of that ellipse. And then we get some feedback from our 
market research people, they say, hey, you know, people don't like the shape of this bottle. It's a little too blocky. It's a little hard to hold in the middle. We need to make a design change. So let's select this curve and then use the edit dimensions icon. And right now they're saying you can it's really just too thick in the middle. We want to change this dimension from 30 to a value of 25. And we want to change this dimension, which is a value of 40, to a value of 35. And those change. And as I was changing them, you can see that these dimensions were updating automatically on the screen in order to make sure that we have one liter of liquid within that convergence percentage. So in that way, we are ensuring that our design intent is always being met inside of the model because of our data analysis feature and our feasibility and optimization feature in the model tree. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.